I started this chair build about six months ago. I'm a procrastinator and it's for my wife. She's pregnant and I need to get it done before this guy shows up. And he's coming in two weeks. Honestly, I don't see how I'm gonna get this done. I don't see how I'm gonna get this done, but I gotta try. So let's get started. Inspiration. Inspiration. Let's talk about inspiration. What inspires you? A very difficult thing to nail down. Nature? Imitation? Not inspiration? Is that the most sincere? Is that just falling in somebody else's group? Something that inspires someone who inspires a project that inspires me. Chairs. Chairs. Chairs are super... Chairs are intimidating. Another thing that intimidates me is bent lamination. I love some of the sculptural forms that can be created with bent lamination, but the process itself is quite in depth. As you can see here, I'm using a two-part form and strip laminations of solid ash to create these bends in the wood. In goes a bunch of spaghetti noodles and out we get the crest rail for the back of the chair. I keep imagining that scene in The Patriot where he's building the chair, sits on it, it breaks, he throws the whole thing in the corner with the rest of his failures. Why did that scene stick? I wasn't building furniture back in second grade when that came out. When I came across Burn Chanley, his low back rocker, I love the lines on it. I reached out to Burn. Hey, I've never built a chair. I wanna recreate your design. It's for personal use. I just wanna figure out what I don't know by building yours. And Burn was like, yeah, sure. Cause he's a cool guy. And he just wanted some credit where credit's due. So this has been inspired by his work. After modeling Burn's chair design a few times, I found a few ways that I wanted to do things differently. The first is that I, I really wanted to explore bent lamination and this seemed like a really good opportunity. And if you followed me for any time at all, you know that I like to challenge myself. So not only is this my first chair, it's my first rocking chair and really my first bent lamination project. So lots and lots of opportunities to learn new technique and really get the hang of all these things that I want to explore more in my work. Would it have been easier to copy an original Windsor design? Yes. Would it have been faster? Definitely. Would I have learned as much? Certainly not. <laughs> Hey babe. Oh shit, I'm coming now. No baby, yet. It is coming a week early though, so let's keep rolling. building a chair, it's usually advised to build a mock-up first, and I found out why. So when I sat in this, I loved the shape, but it just wasn't that comfortable, so I had to bring in some additional laminations to support the lumbar section. Keep your fingers safe, everyone. Now the last lamination that needs to happen on this is gonna be the stretchers. And 
If history tells anything, I'm gonna overcomplicate the hell out of this and it's gonna be sort of a headache. But I think it's gonna turn out pretty dope. So by lining the forms with a little bit of cork, it pads that just enough to take out any inconsistency in the form and then tape and wax are used to cover the forms for all that glue squeeze out because it really takes quite a bit of coverage to get all of these laminations to stick together properly. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but I can tell that the legs are moving a little on the seat. So I think I need to stop here uh, before I continue on with the stretcher and get everything glued together. Also, I smacked myself in the face. Really good trying to get that uh, rail off. I think what I'm gonna do is just keep some angles and I think that might intentionalize the shape a little bit. And then I'll just keep that little bit of round over uh, to keep from pinching at the back. We'll try that, we'll see how it goes. Okay, I learned something. I'll share it with you. Uh, in doing these bent laminations for the slats, uh, trying to twist them out of their hole. Wanted to delaminate, even though they're put together with epoxy, uh, something about the twisting, and that's just not a lot of surface area. There's probably a lot of short grain there and not a lot holding that. This one broke clean off. That is not the piece, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> so I just put in a little maple dowel and uh, I'll glue it in place. In moving from rectilinear forms, I've really, really enjoyed how by hand and by eye and free flowing all of uh, this chair making is. And here is one mistake I wanna point out and I forgot to tilt the table up. I got the one angle right, but I didn't get the second compounding angle. And for a personal educational project, I think I'm all right with it on this one. Maybe not something I deliver. Let me know in the comments down below if you would leave that and take inventory at the end or if you would stop there and remake that seat. Now a grinder, a gouge, and a spoke shave are probably not the best tools to use for shaping a seat, but it's what I got. So uh, it took a little longer than expected, but overall pretty easy. And there is certainly an art to shaping seats, which I do not possess yet. Caitlin started having the real ones last night, like contraction, contraction, could have been gas, uh, but I'm not done yet. Gotta keep moving, gotta get this done before the baby.
thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, like the video if you liked it, and share with a friend. We'll catch you on the next build.